<clears throat> well, good morning. It's B Day here in the apiary. So we're preparing right now for the installation of our honeybees. The first thing we need to do is get their food ready. So um, for bees in the springtime, the ratio is one cup of water to one cup of sugar. I know you kids would like to taste that, but um, that's what we're gonna do for these little bees today. So in this pitcher, I have four cups of water. So that means I need four cups of sugar. One, two, three, Bees are very hungry in the springtime and until the new colony gets acclimated to the new area and the food sources, we feed them. So um, in our hive, we use two feeders. And uh, so here is my water and sugar. And we're going to add some, what we've been told is bee love juice. It's called Honey Bee Healthy and it just smells fantastic. Uh, let me tell you what's in it. Um, what do we have in here? It's spearmint oil. Here we go. Spearmint oil, lemongrass oil, sugar, more sugar, and water. And let me tell you, it is, oh man, Whew. beautiful. So the ratio um, is one to two teaspoons per quart. So we have four cups in here. Is that a quart? Four cups in a quart? Yes. Yeah, uh, eight. Yeah. Is that right? Do you know? Two. I think that's right. Four quarts in a gallon. Right. <laughs> that's not what I want to know. How many cups in a quart? Well, I think it's is this a quart. There's two cups in a pint, and there's two pints in a quart. That's it's four good. cups. Very good. All right, so uh, one to two teaspoons per quart. So this is a quart. So one to two teaspoons. Uh, okay. One third of one. I know. Nancy likes one. I like two, but we'll do with one. Okay, so we put that in. Mix it up. I'm using warm water so that the sugar melts and dissolves quicker. Um, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna mix this up. And we gotta keep mixing. And then we'll put it in the jars. And then they go in the hive. We want everything ready before the bees arrive. And so I think I'm gonna keep mixing this. I will be back with you in a little bit. If okay, wanna, stay tuned. You want to describe the oh sure okay. feeders? So yeah. how the feet? Okay, you can keep stirring that. Um, how the feeders work is, um, let's see. So the lids have these little holes punched in them. the The food goes in the jar, screw the lid on, and then we put two sticks so that when we flip it over, it's raised up, follow me? It's raised up and the little bees can crawl underneath and they just stick their little tongues in these holes to get some of this delicious um, enhanced sugar water. So um, that's how that works, it's gravity. Doesn't it pour out? It does not pour out. Um, through the miracles of physics, um, it does not pour out. Uh, it relies on the bees um, sucking it out, I guess you could say. So um, that's another science lesson for another time. Okay, so um, until we see you later, Whoop. ciao. So here I am. It is a gorgeous day here in Croton for the installation of our honeybees. In a little while, we're going to drive up to, uh, what's the name of that town? I forget the name of the town. Anyway, we're gonna go up there. We're gonna pick up our bees. We're gonna bring them home and we're gonna install them in the hive that sits on this stand. So we already have the food ready. Now we have to get the hive ready. So stay tuned. 
So, this is the hive. It, um, it's on its stand, it's level, and um, I think we're ready for, uh, for our next adventure. I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the inside of the hive, um, what it looks like to the bees that are going to be installed later today. So, um, okay, so this is what it looks like inside. You'll see this is where we have those sticks for the feeding jars. That hole gets plugged up. This is an air vent that has a screen on it so mice don't come in. This is an extra entrance if we were to change the entrance, the design of the hive, another air hole covered. And this is their front door. So we put a donut piece in here to regulate traffic. And um, you don't want it too big because you don't want big critters coming in here. And again, another air vent. This hive um, is pretty cool in that it has a viewing window. So let me open this. Let's see if I can get this open. And you, hold on, you open it. And then you can see we have a viewing window here where we can peek in and see what's going on in the hive. And um, it's really fun to watch them build the comb. So, um, that's, so the next that's step in like the right process now. of getting so, the hive ready is to get our bars ready. And when the, the uh, bees are first installed, they're limited in space. We don't give them the whole reign of the hive to fly around in. We limit them to an apartment about 14, 15 bars wide. And these bars with the triangular base here or bottom are what the bees start to attach the comb to. So for our, we thought it was a good idea last year to number the bars. It was kind of helpful. Anyway, we're going to try it again. We're going to go with the numbers. And so this 15 bar, this is the side of their compartment and it has holes so they, the bees can leave their apartment and go to the feeder. And um, that, that's what we start with. And as the hive expands and they draw all this comb, they may run out of room. So then we move this wall over to the left so the apartment gets bigger. And that's something that we have to pay close attention to to prevent a swarm. A swarm occurs when the bees get too crowded and we really don't want that to happen. The chances of that happening this first year are low. Um, it's more likely to happen or it was our experience that it happened in the second year. Um, so we will and keep an eye on that. that? Well, it happened in the second year because they survived the winter and in the early spring they went into rapid production of uh, the queen the, the queen went into rapid production of egg laying because um, they didn't need to spend their energy on making comb. Right, the I was, was already there. I was going to explain that. I was trying to explain. So they already had comb. The queen got very busy quickly laying eggs and so the population exploded and it became too crowded. And when that happens, it's the natural instinct of a colony to split, to separate. So when that happens, the queen, the established queen, leaves with about half of the bees. But what they do is they create a new queen um, with one of the daughters of that queen. So um, through a process of feeding that um, female cell, uh, royal jelly, extra special food, they create a new queen. And so that's the cycle. It's, it's pretty amazing. And um, so uh, I think we're just about ready. So this is what it will look like when we close the lid. All the action in bee world happens underneath. Okay, so we are just back from Hudson Valley Bee Supply with our box of bees. And this is what it looks like when we get it. I'm gonna show you, okay? So you can see they're all clustered over here. The queen is probably over there. 
Um, there's a can of food. You see that? This metal can of food. And um, so we're getting ready to install the bees in the hive. And uh, we have to get our gear on and get the smoker going. And uh, we'll be right back. Okay, okay we're now Over. ready to install the bees. We're all in our equipment, if you can see me. And uh, Nancy, the beekeeper here, she's going to take out the can of food. The bees will start flying out once you take that out, right? Yeah, I have to quickly put the lid. I think it's the queen on this. Okay, all right. I want the screwdriver. What I need you to do is cover this when I take it. The hole is covered. We have a couple of bees out. The next step will be to remove the queen cage. Did he get squished? I don't know. I need you to be in charge. Okay, let me get on the other side. Queen cage is probably underneath. Is there an underneath the uh, the hamster? I don't know. I would dump them in. Calms the bees, dumping the bees in. Okay. It's as simple as that. Okay. Can you get the queen? Sure. I'm going to get the queen cage out. The queen is in this cage. I would just, they'll find their way in. This does not have any kind of string any, or anything on it. You just want to put it on the bottom. But you have to, un, you have to work on the, I can feel them um, vibrating on my hands. So cool. They're very calm.
going to town on my gloves. I can feel the wings vibrating. <laughs> so cool. It's so neat. Tickles. I don't think they're stinging me. I don't see any of that action. So we're loosening up the sugar plug. is exposed. You see the cork on the end and that's the sugar fondant that's been feeding the queen. Can you give me that cork? Why do you want to put the cork in? Wow. Let me show you how many bees we have in here. Look at this. Wall to wall bees. Amazing. Okay, there are no bees on my hands. Okay, you ready? All right, let's close them up. So we will now put the doors. Yep. Brush. kind of slowly. They don't like rapid jerky movements. Sometimes they recommend using a feather. this down here. Now the bees that are flying around will go into the hive because they know to go to the queen. 
So we leave the box right here for all these stragglers. There's still probably a couple hundred bees still in the box and they will settle down and they will come over here and enter the front door. You can see them now going in and out and that's it. That's the installation. So I think it's been a successful process. Um, hope you've enjoyed watching us do this. It went a lot smoother than I think our first installation did. Installation. Um, and I think that's it. So uh, thanks for joining us. We'll check in with you in a couple of days. Bye. Okay, I'm back at the hive. It's Tuesday, April the 28th. The queen and the uh, new bees have been in this hive since Saturday afternoon. And now uh, what I need to do is check to see if the queen has um, escaped from that little cage. Um, so I'm going into the hive and uh, I'm gonna suit up. So let's check it out. Okay, it's really important to have all your tools with you when you're ready to do this. I did not, so I had to go back. Okay, so I've opened up the hive. Looks good. We got a little, a few bees here. My job, two things I have to do. I have to check to see if the queen has escaped from the cage and also to check on their feeding to see if they need more food. So I think I'll do that first. We know that the food is down here around 22, 23, and 24. So I'm peering in and this is old comb. Wow. So, okay. So they still have plenty of food, not an issue. Let me re replace these bars. There are some bees hanging out, sucking on that sugar water. Come on, everybody in. I don't want to crush these little bees. If you move slowly, they'll move. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing, we need to find that queen cage. Now remember, when we looked in here before, there were thousands and thousands of bees. That's what I'm expecting. But I'm calm. I'm in my whites. I got my brush. And I'm gonna just move slowly. I'm not here to offend these bees. I just wanna check. Let's start with bar number four. Oh boy. Oh boy, lots of bees. Hi. Okay, I'm looking in. You know, it's dark inside. You can't really see what's going on. Or I can't, the bees can. I see the cage. I can't tell if she's in it or out of it. The cage is covered in bees. What I would like to do is extract the cage. I have a feeling since there's bees all over it, she's still in there. Let's see if I can help you see what, what I can see. Whoa. All right, a little dark in there. Ah, there you go. You see that? Okay. So, my thinking is she's not out of the cage, but I'm going in. I'm just gonna go slowly. I'm gonna pull it out. Okay. And I'm just gonna put it down. And, oh, is it upside down? No, it's not. I don't see her yet. Let me get my brush. Remember, she has a blue dot. Oh, no. What's going on? Oh, there she is. She's still crawling around. 
All right, so I think what I need to do, oh, let me see. Let's see if the hole, if the bees have gotten to her yet. I think they're still working on it. Yeah. I think what I need to do is to help this process along. Yeah. So, like I said, have all your tools ready. I, of course, do not. All right. We need to help this little queen get out. So, yeah. So, what am I going to do? I really need to get one of those screws, right? Okay, so I'm going to put her down for a minute. I'm going to go get one of those screws and I'll be right back. So here's one of those screws, and what I want to do is help these, oh, I see bees with pollen in their pants. I want to get, ah, uh, okay. I think we're through. I'm going to put the queen cage back in, make sure she's, it's stable, it's been opened. And now I'm going to return these bars. I'm going to brush the bees away. And I'm just going to return the bars, number four, after number three. Come on, I don't want to squish you. Everybody in, okay. And then we have, this is bar five. And come on, everybody move it. Come on, that's it. I don't want to hurt you. Okay, good. And then we have bar six. Okay. Everybody move. Okay. So, there we go. Okay. So, a hole has been made through that fondant, the sugar cube that um, keeps the bees in that cage. You can see now they're swarming all over, but that's fine. That's okay. They are going to get back in the hive. I'm going to get out of their way. All right, I'm closing up shop here, guys. Okay, everybody move it. I don't wanna squish you. Come on, let's go. Everybody move it. Come on, everybody move it. Here we go. Everybody out. Okay. It's good. Okay. That's that. Put my brush down. We put a strap over in case it gets windy. We don't want the, um, the hive to blow over, especially now. See, it doesn't have a lot of weight in it because um, there's no honey yet. But once the bees draw comb, lay eggs, the queen lays eggs and they make honey, the uh, bars will become quite heavy. But we still want to make sure in case of a, a windy rainstorm, which we might have tomorrow, actually. So that's it. Um, that is my inspection. It's all good, and um, we'll see you on the other side.